This is the continuation of our CIT 255 introduction. This is part two. What kind of measurements do surveyors make? Well, let's first talk about distance measurements. You know that horizontal and vertical directions are perpendicular to each other. And a slope distance can be broken down into a horizontal and a vertical distance if that slope distance falls in the vertical plane. So that's the three types of distances we're going to measure. Horizontal distances, vertical distances, and slope distances. And then we measure angles. Those angles could be in the horizontal plane or in the vertical plane. It seems that just about everything we do can be expressed in these terms when we are dealing with traditional survey methods. In fact, here is that relationship. Here's horizontal and vertical uh, distances related to each other with uh, slope distance. We measure distances with multiple methods. Taping we don't do so much of anymore, but it's still essential as a manual check to our automated methods. So we're going to spend a little time dealing with taping in this course. We're going to spend quite a bit of time using electronic distance measurement techniques which could include the use of a total station and you'll get into those within probably the first month of the course. And We can use either infrared light or laser, pulsed laser, to measure those distances. With global positioning system, we're measuring distance electronically all the way from the satellites to our receivers. And we're doing it at the speed of light. Then we can measure vertical distances with a process we call leveling. And that's the first phase of our course, is leveling. The units we use in the angular realm are going to be degrees, minutes, and seconds. One degree we divide into 60 minutes. And then each minute gets divided into 60 seconds. This will give us a circle divided not into a mere 360 parts, but we take that 360 degree circle and divide it into seconds, and that will give us 1.296 million seconds in a circle. That's much higher resolution than the fairly coarse unit of one degree. And then we're going to measure distances in decimal feet. Decimal feet is far superior to feet and inches for the large volume of calculations we will do. So now we don't have to mess with conversions of 12 and 3 and 9 and 27 and fractions of an inch. We will deal with feet divided into tenths and hundredths of a foot. As I said just a moment ago, leveling will be the first phase of this course. We need to lay down a foundation of definitions to prepare you for the first lab. Leveling is to determine the difference in elevation between points. If we want to know how high one point is relative to another, we're going to use the process of leveling to determine the difference in the elevation between those two points. An elevation, then, is any point's vertical distance above or below a surface of reference. For instance, we often think of ceiling height as a distance above the floor. The floor becomes our datum. So, if that 
datum, we say, has an elevation of 0, then the elevation of an 8-foot ceiling would be 8 feet. A datum, then, is that surface of reference. Now, a height, by contrast, is the vertical distance between the top and bottom of an object. My height is 6 foot 1 inch, or we could say 6.08 feet. That is not my elevation. The elevation near my home is 720 feet, but that is not my height. So height and elevation are necessarily different. So I contrast these definitions. You already have elevation written down here, but they are different. Height is top to bottom. Elevation is from a point to the surface of reference. It could be above the surface of reference or it could be below the surface of reference. So height and elevation are necessarily very different, but related. A level is a telescope for sighting combined with a leveling device for maintaining our line of sight in a horizontal position. The image you see here is a common style of level, very similar to the ones you will use in this course. So I want to spell out the components of this level, and you will see these components showing up on the devices you use in our first lab. Let's start with the objective lens. If this is a telescope, you're sighting through the instrument. It has a lens on one end and a lens on the other. Well, the big end, the end where your line of sight exits the instrument, is the objective lens. It can be focused, much like you can focus a camera. Now, on the opposite end is an eyepiece. That's the end you look into. And the eyepiece can also be focused. So there are really two focusing knobs. One is the eyepiece itself. And then behind the instrument, on a part you can't see in this image, there is a knob on the side that operates the focus for the objective lens. Then. There is a leveling bubble in the horizontal surface of the base of the instrument. We have a leveling bubble. It is a circular bubble in what we call a bullseye in a in a circular vial. And there is a circle etched on the glass of that circular vial. And when we get the bubble inside the circle, then we have the instrument leveled. On modern instruments, there are three leveling screws. We will show you in the lab how to use the three leveling screws to level the instrument in two different directions. That is, in the X direction and the Y direction. And then these leveling screws attach the instrument to the base. If you look between the screws there, you can see a hole that is a threaded hole. And the thread in that hole matches the thread on a nut on the tripods that we use. That allows us to screw that nut into this base and attach the level to the tripod. At the top of the instrument, we often have what we call a peep sight. There are different styles of peep sights, but I want you to think of this as a rough aiming device. Much like the front and the rear sights on a gun, we can use this to aim at a rod or some target where we need to measure, and then that helps us to get the optics of the instrument 
pointed in the right direction so that when we focus we're not uh, pointing somewhere we don't intend to be. When you come to the lab on Friday we will show you how to operate and set up instruments like this. This concludes our introduction to survey lecture. Thanks for your attention.